for Paulo. So now this fight is going to be very interesting. Jonathan, a brown belt, but was one of the best blue belts I've ever trained with. And Went, he's a new brown belt. Yep, fresh brown belt. Went through purple belt doing very, very well. But um, his opponent, sort of a dark horse on the scene. He's beating a lot of tough guys. Probably one of Japan's best. What's the proper pronunciation of his name? Iwasaki? Yeah. Masahiro, Masahiro Iwasaki. I've trained with uh, both of these guys, and Masahiro is very, very good. He's a beast. He's a beast. Uh, very traditional style game, but bringing a lot of explosiveness, explosiveness and athleticism to that traditional style. Yeah. I, of course, I was living out in Japan for the last six months, and uh, thank, thankfully to Yuki, who owns a Carpe Diem, I was able to train there uh, with a lot of these guys pretty intimately, and man, Iwasaki is a beast. And the whole Carpe Diem team that, that they're building out there is just, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's, it's one of the best, if not the best, in Japan. So really cool to see them furthering the sport. And Iwasaki is, man, he's got good wrestling. He's I'm, got a great half guard. This is going to be sort of a, a matchup of very new school style versus old school style. But Jonathan uses a lot of lapel, a lot of barambolo, hybrid movements, looking for the back a lot, but is also very comfortable on top and incredibly strong for his size. And both are very good athletes. <laughs> and have that that deep desire to win. They'll fight tooth oh, yeah. and nail. These right guys to the both end. fight super hard. Now, this is something I notice about uh, Iwasaki a lot, is he will actually just go into people's clothes guards. Which yeah, and he likes the Sao Paulo pass, so this underhook okay, is okay. actually maybe by design. Okay. Which is interesting, because something you don't see a ton, but here working on this omoplata already. Like we were talking about earlier, clothes guard is a very advantageous position, so it's rare for people to willingly go into it like that, but if he's confident in his Sao Paulo pass. It's, I think it's his main pass, which mm. is, um, Man, it's such a risky pass if you don't if you don't do it perfect, absolutely perfectly. Oh yeah, you can get triangle, get your back taken, and Waplatas. Oh, and here trying to threaten the triangle again, back to the close guard. So we'll see, see if he goes for the South Palo pass. Reaching back, which I feel is always a little risky in the close guard in gi. Now I wonder if he instinctively knows which foot is on bottom of the close guard lock because he was reaching back to the side of the foot that's on bottom, which would make it a lot easier to unhook that. I see a lot of people trying to do this pass to the opposite side over the top hook, and that sort of just reinforces their ankle position. So he probably knows that that's the weaker side to attack the Sao Paulo. I think most people put that right hook on the bottom as well, mm. too. Maybe it's predictable in that sense. I personally stay out of close guard if like my life depends on it. I do not want to get stuck there. I'm right there with you. And it's interesting to see somebody with such a risky passing style just put himself directly into close guard. Now, that might be difficult for uh, Jonathan to deal with because he's very used to people passing on their feet. Everyone at AOJ is knee cut, Toriando, leg drag style passing. Dealing with someone who passes on both knees like this can really put a wrench in, uh, in the plan. Yeah, it's, it, it, it does shut down a lot of that stuff. Also, leg locks when they pass on the on the knees. True. So so many. Well, right into a triangle, but he's got his arm in, so not really going to amount to anything. Yeah, and Iwasaki's one of those guys where he's deceptively strong too. So even if you have the beginnings like a loose triangle, he's uh, one of those people. If you're not much bigger than him or much stronger than him, which is very difficult, mm -hmm. like he'll probably find a way to grit his way through it and get his arms back which just adds an extra layer of difficulty to everything you do. Here, reaching back again. So insistent on this. Yes, and he digs that underhook and immediately trying to switch the hips and move to that Sao Paulo. Now, this can be really frustrating for a guy like Jonathan because he wants to open up his guard. Like, you can tell he kind of wants to, but you can't against someone who's on their knees. They, you're, they kind of force you into playing close guard against them, and if you're not super comfortable in close guard, which is a position that's kind of negle neglected by the modern grappler of today, they focus so much more on the open guards. Like... If you're not super confident in it, you can kind of just feel helpless there. Like maybe you're not, he's not passing, but you're not really doing anything either. It's interesting that you say that because they do a lot of, in Japan, that 
that I was seeing when I was training out there, they do a lot of over-under passing, like you said, a little bit more older school game, passing on the knees. Um, but if you're not willing to play close guard with somebody like that, a, a very powerful over-under pass can just shut down your whole guard game. I wonder if he's going to change his style now. It looks like he's switching more to like a double under attack. At a certain point, you just can't keep doing the same thing if it's not resulting in something. You've got to switch to a new pass. This is a really good example of how the guy on top controls the pace of the fight because it's really up to uh, Iwasaki if he wants to play close guard now or if he wants to try and pass his, not play clo close guard, if he wants to pass close guard versus passing open guard. Maybe he wasn't finding success there. He's the one who gets to decide what guard he deals with here. The downside of this is if passing on your knees versus an open guard is not very effective. That's why people switch to a more standing style against open guards. It's just once they get a lasso, um, a lasso spider, one of those things is really going to yeah. shut down a lot of your So ability. much leverage comes from the, just the spider hooks alone. Yep. If you're on your knees. He really needs to be able to use his upper body against Jonathan's lower body, and Jonathan's shutting that down with these grips. And then back in the close guard, and yep. probably look for another Sao Paulo pass here. Jonathan did switch it up, though. Now the right leg is on top, or it was. So when Iwasaki went to reach back, it was not the uh, leg that he was looking for, necessarily. Jonathan keeps threatening the triangle, forces Iwasaki back down into the broken down position in the close guard. Only two minutes left to go. Hard to say who's winning this one. Now, when you face a guy like this, I, I've found that when I fight in heavier divisions, I fight a lot of guys who pass on their knees versus my open guard, and they kind of tend to want to go into my close guard because it's a little harder to surprise someone from close guard. Um, it can be really effective to use more of a two-on-one style. Putting, doubling up on one arm and trying to force triangle chokes and mopladas would it, their only option to defend that is to, to stand to stand or to raise one knee and once they raise a knee then you're allowed to play De La Hiva against them so Jonathan's not really doing that though he's insistent on these upper body grips not really forcing Masahiro to pass with his legs up at all yeah just playing that loose spider or the loosey uh, <laughs> spider the the loose lasso the loose lasso with the left leg loose now he's going for a deeper one but but again, Lasso is not a very offensive guard. It's like sort of a defensive posture. You don't see a lot of submissions or sweeps come from the Lasso. And this Sao Paulo pass is just not even coming close to anything. Yeah, he's not getting deep into it. or yeah. I think he's feeling threatened because Jonathan reacts, and then he has to back out right away. So it's just Jonathan really needs constantly. the De La Hiva hook to get something going here. But there he, tr he tried to make the shin to shin to, to get the De La Hiva, it looked like. But Iwasaki now on his feet, but still sprawled really far away. What what exactly would you be looking for here if you're Jonathan? You know, there's a few positions that can force an opponent over the top of you when they're trying to keep their hips away like this. Um, you might be surprised to hear that they mostly involve the lapel, John. <laughs> <laughs> a little surprised, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I use a what I called an, an intermediary lapel control, which isn't quite a worm guard. <laughs> it isn't quite squid guard. But there's a way to play all of these traditional style guards on a lapel, and it can allow you to get underneath someone a little more effectively and force a sort This is, I wouldn't say uh, Iwasaki's disengaging, but he's definitely hiding his legs in a way that's oh, and slowing here we got down. An attempt, and he locks it up, trying to underhook that far arm. You know, I'm surprised. Iwasaki, now he's just extending it. Now he's going to actually work on the straight arm bar, and he gets the tap. Amazing, yep. Right at the end with only less than 30 seconds to go, Jonathan Alves forcing Iwasaki to submit via arm bar. You know, I didn't think he was going to be able to mount a submission off that, but definitely isolating one of those arms, that is the weakness of someone trying to play into your close guard. They can't use their legs to defend their arms, so if you can double up on that with both arms, both legs, and get something going like that, that is your best bet. And Jonathan ex executed it perfectly. The winner by submission is Jonathan Alves. I wonder how Jonathan's brown belt opponents are going to feel <laughs> when they face him knowing that he's beating, submitting 
high level black belts. The top of the heap black belts? Yeah. Yeah, that's um Iwasaki is definitely in the top ten of his weight division.